I am so excited for episode six of Muzzy Kanye on repeat. You're in the right place this week because we're going to be exploring different collaborations. I love it when people work together. So take two brothers, 11 countries, 193 singers, and you'll have the Nguane brothers and their virtual cell phone choir. be asking, who are Seventh-day Adventists? Commonly known as Adventists, we are a Christian movement established in 1863. We have 28 fundamental beliefs and more than 20 million members. We also observe the Seventh-day Sabbath. Worldwide, we have more than 162,000 congregations. We serve countless communities with our education institutions. With 2 million students. And 198 hospitals around the world. And it's all because we love Jesus. 
Our next collaboration, put together by Marvin Fonley, has three brothers, the three LaRue brothers, doing the lead. They're all in different places, but boy, you can connect those voices. Marvin Fonley and friends with Through the Fire. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances and things I could not understand. Oh, and many times in trials, weakness blurs my vision and then my frustration gets so out of hand. Instead I am reminded I've never been forsaken And I've never had to stand one test alone When I look at all the victories The Spirit rises up in me Headed through the fire My weakness is a match to So proud of this collaboration that started in Cape Town. And today, it's international. X and Bulls, award-winning musicians. We're proud of you. And we love your collaborations. Check out this one, More About Jesus. <laughs> Would I know more of his grace to others show more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me.
just let me learn more of His holy will. Discern, Spirit of God, my teacher, be showing the things of Christ. Celebrations, rest. All humans need rest and relaxation. Without it, we can suffer cognitive impairments. But the chaotic world always has tempting demands and activities that might seem more important than quality rest. When you're tired, the executive functions of your mind suffer. You'll become less effective at recognizing the choices available to you and less capable of deciding which is best. Feeling tired not only makes you more stressed, but also inefficient, slower, less safe, and more likely to make mistakes. But how much sleep do you really need to make sure you stay at the top of your game? It varies between individuals, but experts agree that 7 hours of sleep per night is enough to get by. Establishing a regular bedtime ritual, eating lightly in the evening, and maintaining a quiet and peaceful environment for sleeping will help you get a good night's rest. Being well rested empowers you to be receptive to God's blessings and thus continually restored to optimal health. Nestled on the foothills of Helderberg Mountain in the picturesque suburb of Somerset West, Cape Town, South Africa, Helderberg College was the first Adventist college outside of the United States. It opened on the 1st of February 1893, almost 130 years ago. At Helderberg College, we have a clear mission and vision. Our mission is to deliver quality, values-based higher education uh, based on the Seventh-day Adventist educational philosophy. And our intention is to produce competent and ethical graduates. Our vision, we intend to be an institution of choice in Southern Africa for higher education. Helderberg College of Higher Education, our programs are Christ-centered on reinforcing our mission to produce competent and ethical graduates that possess the qualities and values that are attractive to an employer, or have the ingenuity and confidence to start a business of their own. At Helderberg College of Higher Education, we care about our students. Here, you are an individual and are treated as such. You are not just a student number to our lecturers. At Helderberg College of Higher Education, we want to see you achieve your goals. Helderberg College of Higher Education is not just concerned about the academic performance of its students. We care about the mental and physical faculties too. 
Helderberg College of Higher Education has a holistic approach to education, strengthening the whole person for harmonious development, preparing them not just for this world, but also for the world to come. There's something so special about these next two tracks, husband and wife, in combinations that are so rich and unique. Mario and Tristan Grieve and Soul to Soul have this week's Back to Back.
Pastor Nyabali will reflect on the song Love Will Be Our Home as performed by Nathan Doman in this week's message in a song. I hope you will be blessed by the end of this short devotion. And today we are speaking under a beautiful song, a beautiful piece of music. Love will be our home. Love will be our home. Now, beloved friends, we also need to get to understand that songs are extremely powerful. 
you see CAT scans actually reveal that the hemisphere of the brain uh, they ignite when the song is played songs have a way to unite and to bring us together they have a magical way of bringing people together from different walks of life and and they highlight the differences the love the race the gender and even culture and many societal norms now Powerful music like the song Love Will Be Our Home. They, they, they actually have a way of, inspi despite and in spite our differences, they highlight how similar we are as the human race. And our common life experiences can create a bond and a relationship to a song and they bring us together as a people. Families, they create fun out of the power of song and out of the power of music. And the interesting piece of music, it goes like this. If home is really where the heart is, then home must be a place that we all share. For even with our difference of hearts are much the same and where love is, and where love is, we come together. And you know, friends, I usually even say this when I speak to uh, couples that I'm marrying, that a home is a home only when there is love. Without love, a home is just a house with people who are cohabitating. So there is indeed power in song because song actually makes the home to be what a home is. And the song continues to say, wherever there is laughter ringing, uh, someone smiling, someone dreaming, we can live together there. Love will be our home. Where there are children singing, where a tender heart is beating, we can live together there. Love will be our home. And with love, hearts can be a family. Now listen to this, friends. With love, hearts can be a what? A family. Now that's a powerful line there. And the song continues to say, and hope can bring this family face to face. And though we may be apart uh, with our hearts, we can be one with the power of song when love brings us together in one place. That is the power of song. And immediately, friends, when, this, when, when I saw this song, my mind went straight to the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 33, verses 27. And it reads thus, In ancient times, God became a home. He always supported you with his arms. He estimated, he estimated your enemies and said, Let them be destroyed. Such a powerful text of scripture. And I, I however love this powerful text of scripture when you read it in the vernacular Bible in Tosa. It says, Now, with this powerful song, and if you read it, uh, if you sing the song from the perspective of Deuteronomy, then you understand the power that is in it. The occasion of the writing of this beautiful text of scripture that we have just read was the foot of Mount Pisgah. Now, Moses had just been informed by God in chapter 31 that he was not going to cross the Jordan River. In the third part of Deuteronomy, in verse 14 of chapter 31, Moses had just been told by God that his death was near. And here Moses receives a lot of setbacks after having been faithful to the Lord by leading his own people to the borders of Canaan. Moses had gone through a lot of challenges with the Israelites for him to find himself at a crossroads where he is being told that for 40 years you've wandered in the wilderness, now you will not enter this promised land. And in our chapter of consideration, Moses is, is preparing to breathe his last breath on the Mount of Pisgah, after which the son of Nun, uh, Joshua, would take over and lead Israel across Jordan. Now, Moses was praying and preparing for the young Joshua to take over a stiff-necked people, a people that cost Moses everything, a people that cost Moses the Canaan land. And in the chapter we've just read, Moses had just blessed the 12 tribes of Israel by name. And he now was concluding a series of blessings over Israel as a whole.
And despite the hard-heartedness of the Israelites, watch what Moses is doing. Moses was encouraging them that as they were preparing to receive that which he would never taste, he was preparing them to receive the promises that they cost him. And beloved friends, in verse 26, Moses says, There is none like God, O Jerusalem, who rides through the heavens to your help, through the skies in his majesty. And here, beloved family of God, Moses refers to Israel with a kind name. He was calling them with a pet name, Jeshuram, which is to say the upright one. A name befitting the ideal character that, that Israel was supposed to possess. And despite the differences that might have been between Israel and the people of uh, and, and Moses, we see that uh, Moses' attitude did not change towards them. And in, in his eyes, they were still the apple of God's eye. And I want to pause there, beloved friends, for a moment and to suggest to us that for our homes to be what the song says, a place where the heart is, a place we all share, even with our difference of hearts and even ideas, then we need to adopt the Moses attitude. See, let me tell you this one thing about song. Despite all our differences in the church of God, our common goal is to share the love of God. And now, we cannot share what we do not possess. We cannot pour from an empty cup. And love should begin in our homes before it is translated to the places of worship. Moses exclaims to God that God uh, rides through the heavens to help them when they are in trouble. Jeshuram, Israel, is God's favorite child. And friends, despite the shortfalls in life, we are still God's favorite children. And this understanding then leads us to Deuteronomy, uh, to Deuteronomy 33, uh, verses 27a. The eternal God is your dwelling place. And underneath are his everlasting arms. Friends, God is prepared to help his favorite child at all times. And nothing, nothing under the sun can touch his favorite child when his favorite child is tucked under the everlasting arms of the Father. Oh, friends, what an assurance this morning, what an assurance this afternoon, and yes, what an assurance this evening to know that God is our home. Yes, friends, God is our dwelling place. God is our home. Love is our home, and God is love. And because God is love, God is is our home. And like a child, beloved friends, who gets troubled at school, they are free whenever they are at home. Because at home, there is no place that gives them comfort than home. And home is where they find a place of solace, a place of tranquility. Like children on the day of trouble, let us remember, beloved friends, that God is our home. And I love the third, stanza, the, third, the third stanza of the song. We can live there. Love will be our home. And with love, our hearts can be a family. Perhaps let me read it again. We can live together there. Love will be our home. With love, our hearts can be a family. And hope can bring this family face to face, and though we may be apart uh, from our hearts, we, when, we lo when love brings us together in one place, then we become one. When we are gathered in this, in this place called home, the home of love. You see, the NIV and the KJV version, they translate the word dwelling place as a refuge, uh, suggesting a place of retreat in the time of trouble. 
people. And the Kosa version translates the same word as home, suggesting that a place where we find rest for our weary, uh, for our weary souls. And the English version, it actually uses the word dwelling place. And friends, whether God is our place of refuge, whether God is our place of retreat in the time of trouble. And friends, we can be rest assured that his love draws us closer to him. His love draws us nearer to him. It brings us closer to God and beloved family of God because God is our home. As the text suggests, then we make him our habitation. We make him our place of refuge. His spirit then infuses us into his everlasting arms. Oh, friends watching from home, let me tell you, his arms are wide open for us. As so long as we make him to be our home, God is our home. So whenever we run to him, he is always ready to welcome us because he is our home. And beloved friends, I want to suggest to you as I wrap up to us today that let us remember that we need to live in him. We need to dwell in him. He is is our home. He is a place of refuge. His ancient arms are ready to defend us because he is our home. When the enemy thinks it has the better of us, his arms are ready to emerge underneath us to give us flight from our problem. And beloved friends, God is our home. And I want to submit to us this morning, this afternoon, and this evening that whenever we find problems in our lives, let us remember that God is our home. And let me read to you the last stanza of the song. If home is really where the heart is, then home must be a place we all share. And beloved friends, we look forward to that day where we'll be gathered to our greater home, the home that is beyond the clouds, the home that is four square. Oh, friends, I want to invite you that we always find solace in God who is our home. And I pray that the Lord blesses you and that the Lord lifts his face to shine upon you and the Lord be gracious upon you all. Amen and amen. If home is really where the heart is, then home must be a place we all can share. For even without differences, our hearts are much the same. For where love is, we come together. Tender heart is beating We can live together there Love will be our home With love Our hearts can be a family And hope can bring this family Face to Face. And though we may be far apart, our hearts can be as one When love brings us together in one place Wherever there is laughter ringing, someone smiling, someone dreaming can live together there. Love will be our home. With there are words of kindness spoken, 
Where a vow is never broken, we can live together there. Love will be our home. Love will, love will be our home. Love will, love will be our home. Love will, love will be our home. Fresh. I mean, um, I like vegan fresh because, I mean, the name states it itself. I'm vegan. I've been vegan for three years. Um, and it's been a difficult transition because the lack thereof places like this that have wholesome, nutritious food. Burritos and the burgers are great, but like I just can't commit to one thing, um, which is the reason I like that. Also, the fried plantains are the most amazing thing. The very name of the restaurant is spot on, vegan fresh, because the salads are updated almost hourly. Blue zones around the world are where people generally live longer than normal. Loma Linda has the highest concentration of Seventh-day Adventists in the United States. Some residents live 10 more healthy years than the average American by following a healthy diet of grains, nuts, fruits, and vegetables. Uh, so we're, you know, uh, kind of proud of that distinction. And uh, um, what is exciting, most exciting to us, I think, is that um, uh, food, as well as, you know, plant-based food, vegan food, really brings people together uh, and brings people uh, into this restaurant or into our lives that we would in no other way meet. And here in Vegan Fresh Restaurant, we have opportunity to serve 50 to 60 people a day, and that gives us opportunity uh, to minister, to share uh, with people and have them have literatures, ask questions about our belief, about who we are, about why we do what we do. Would you go? Yes. Would you like a bag? Or, uh, no. Utensils and napkins are over there to your right. I'm going to eat it right now. Have a great day. So I immediately was drawn to the uh, atmosphere that comes with Virginia's interest in food and her mission statement for this place. People come here that has not known anything about God or how God or food relate to our relationship with God. So they're able to 
not only pick up literature because we have a table that they can pick it up, not only that. So I talk to my customers as they sit eating. I can I go greet them, can I chat with them? And so it's a ministry. It's not just eating food. It's feeding the body as well as their soul. People we would never see uh, in our, you know, sort of our normal lives. Um, and we have seen fruit, and, and really that's what, what this is what it's all about, is, is, is doing that outreach, um, as well as promoting uh, a healthy lifestyle and plant-based nutrition. And when I found this place, I, I was hooked. I came, like, honestly every day that week. I was just so overwhelmed with excitement that everything was not packaged. Like nothing was packaged, I, I couldn't believe it. And I just, I just kept coming back and I had my husband who was a non-vegan try it and he was like, wow, this is delicious. My favorite thing to get at Vegan Fresh is the plantain platter, which just has like a variety of different things. And I think it's like you get five items and it's customizable and there's always something new um, that you can sub substitute in. and. Um, which I think is nice because you get to sample a lot of things because all the food is so good. There was a gorilla burger that's served here and a little um, sign that shows the gorilla and states that gorillas are vegan. So I just loved learning tidbits of information by coming here. We have had several people come to church um, indicating, you know, their understanding about the relationship uh, food has with God. Um, they come to Bible study after church in our home, my husband and I. And so um, it's been a great ministry. It's been a really great ministry. Virginia, we're going to be good friends. <laughs> and we have. I've gone to church with her and we did become a good friends. That's number one inspiration um, to make people uh, live you know, a healthy life. So we have a really kind of a diverse clientele um, that we, as I said, would never uh, meet in our regular lives. She educated me so well to, to fully understand that these are the bare necessities and that's the best way to, to fuel your body is on the bare necessities without all the additives. It's mine. No, it's mine. But you know it's mine. But Daddy bought it for me. I often tell my children when they're arguing over a toy, I was there when you came into this world. I saw you and you came with nothing. See, everything you have, we provided for you, even this toy. So share it. And that, of course, is true for all of us. God is the creator and owner of everything. We came into this world with nothing and we will exit this world with nothing. See, everything we have, God has provided. Let's remember that these are His blessings to share. Remember, stewardship is my all in response to God's all. It's like I don't want this week's episode to end. I love listening to collaborations, to hearing different textures of music come together. And we've had our full this week. We hope to see you next week, though. And we're going to leave you with a bonus track, which is also a collaboration. Hope you enjoy it. And until next time, from me, Lisa Marie Smith, it's goodbye. Father alone. Father alone we know no more about, 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 about.